ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا فلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد Welcome to another episode of Quran in Depth and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he blesses these minutes that we spend reciting the book of Allah and explaining the meanings of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pondering over it so that we extract the benefits and the things for us to act according to the book of Allah, the Qur'an. As it's mentioned before and as the belief of every Muslim that this book, the Qur'an, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of our happiness in this life and in the hereafter. There is no salvation, there is no goodness, there is no happiness whatsoever. For a Muslim, unless we hold fast to the book of Allah, and that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Qur'an, in many verses in the Qur'an, so we need to give the Qur'an the attention. We need to give the Qur'an the best of our times, the best effort to learn what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, and to seek the help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to apply the words of Allah. A lot of us, we recite the Qur'an, seeking the rewards from the recitation of the Qur'an, as the Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith, the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha, that he said ﷺ in the meaning of which, that every letter that we recite in the Qur'an is equal to ten rewards. One reward is better than this whole word and whatever it contains. And he said ﷺ that alif lam meme is not just one letter, alif is one letter, lam is one letter, meme is another letter. So by just saying Alif Lam Mim, it's 30 rewards, which is definitely a great intention for the person to recite the book of Allah. But this is only one job to be done. The recitation of the Qur'an would lead us to explanation of the meaning, would lead us to the ponder over the meanings of the Qur'an, and that would lead us to the fruits of pondering and recitation, and that is to act according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. And that's why a common benefit in every verse of the Qur'an, something that we need to gain every time we recite the Qur'an, we need to gain the fact that we are nothing but slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We receive this Qur'an as slaves and servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have nothing but to submit ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, the most high subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the more we recite the Qur'an, we see that. We see that how much we are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have no power, we have no intellect, we have nothing whatsoever unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would bestow His mercy and His bounty and His knowledge unto us. And then after that, we need also to learn and to get the benefit of the perfect love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we see the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that a person is guided and given the permission to recite the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to act according to it. This is the best bounty and the best favor that a person can have on the face of earth. And this is basically the meaning of being servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Two pillars that we should never forget. One pillar and that is to submit ourselves with humbleness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second pillar is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the perfect love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We reached verse number 31 in Surah Al-Baqarah. And a quick review of what we mentioned before very quickly. From the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah till verse number 30. 30 verses, great words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We saw how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala classified the human beings into believers and disbelievers and hypocrites. And each section it's mentioned the characteristics of each group. 
and how this is something when it's mentioned in the Quran, it's calling us to be among the believers and to be warned against the disbelievers and the hypocrites and to stay away from their characteristics. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called mankind, all mankind, in the first call in the Quran to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. This is the purpose of our life, to worship the creator of the heavens and the earth alone. And then the evidences of why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship. And then comes the story of Adam alayhi salam. The first story mentioned in the Quran about Adam alayhi salam, the first of the human beings. And that's why the, uh, this story is such an important one to know where we come from. We came from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran from Adam alayhi salam. And Adam alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high, he created him. He created him from... Uh, clay from uh, mud and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most powerful verse number 31 it says أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وعلم آدم الأسماء كلها ثم عرضهم على الملائكة فقال فقال أنبئوني بأسماء هؤلاء إن كنتم صادقين after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed the angels that he will have on the face of earth an intercessor, Adam alayhi salam, and his offsprings, those who would come after Adam alayhi salam, that they have a different nature than the nature of the angels. The angels, they listen and they obey, and they don't have a will, they don't have a choice whatsoever. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed them that Adam alayhi salam is a different nature, and that is he will be given the amana, the trust, to be able to have the will to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to disbelieve and to be disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that as a result of this test, the offsprings of Adam alayhi salam will be either among the people of the Hawfire or among the people of uh, the Jannah, the paradise. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا عَلَّمَ means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught. This is in the past tense. Taught Adam الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا Al-Asma meaning the names. Kullaha meanings, all of them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that Adam alayhi salam was taught all the names. What names? All the names that Adam alayhi salam will be in need of. And some of the ulama they said in the tafsir, all the names of everything that existed on the face of earth. For Adam to know and to have this knowledge, and this is something for the offsprings of Adam to know. So this is something that shows the virtue of Adam alayhi salam, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Most High, taught him the names of everything. ثُمَّ عَرَضَهُمْ عَلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ ثُمَّ means then. عَرَضَهُمْ, it was presented, showed to the angels, عَلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ And we talked last time about the angels, and the angels are something that is unseen to us. One of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the authentic hadith, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them, from light. And there are many verses in the Quran that talks about the angels. So we believe in the angels that they are a powerful creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them from light. They have certain jobs that are entrusted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fulfill and to do. And they can be shaped in different ways and forms according to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we believe in them in general, and in specific the names that are mentioned in the Qur'an with specific angels and also in the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed all the different objects, all the different things that he taught Adam their names to the angels. فَقَالَ أَنْبِئُونِي فَقَالَ meanings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the angels, أَنْبِئُونِي inform me بِأَسْمَاءِ هَؤُلَاءِ by the names of these, inform me these of these names these objects that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed the angels, he told them to inform Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about these names, in kuntum sadiqeen, if you are truthful. And why this is mentioned, this is like a challenge, as the ulama they say, because of the previous verse. When the angels, they said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, أَتَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءِ وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ They said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, would you have on the face of earth someone that would spread corruption on it and he would shed blood while we are glorifying your praise, O Allah? And they were not saying that as we heard last time as a way of uh, detesting or protesting the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but as a way of wanting to be informed, wanting to know the wisdom behind the creation of Adam alayhi salam. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, showed these objects to them and told them to inform Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about these names if they were truthful, to remind them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wise subhanahu wa ta'ala and He is the most knowledgeable subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the next verse, Qalu subhanak. Qalu meaning they said. And the reason I'm mentioning one word at a time so that it's an opportunity for us to get to learn the Arabic language. And again, this is something that is very important for us to feel the Qur'an and for the Qur'an to have the perfect effect in our life. We need also to put the effort. If we have the capability, if you see yourself that you have the capability of learning the language of the Qur'an, then don't waste your life. Don't ruin your life by being away from learning the language that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for the final revelation to mankind. And for our children, for them to be able to live the Qur'an and to feel the Qur'an and to have the best effect in their lives. Qalu meaning the angels, they said, Subhanak. Subhanak, and the word is familiar of course, of course because we hear Subhanallah. So they said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Subhanak. And Subhanak means, glory be to you. Or it means, there is no deficiency in you, O Allah the Most High. This is the meaning of Subhanallah. That means it's praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the meaning of which that there is no deficiency to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, denying all deficiencies, negating all deficiencies from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He is the most perfect subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they said, Qalu subhanak. They said, O oh Allah, glory be to you. La ilma lana illa ma'allamtana. We have no knowledge except what you have taught us. This is the response of the angels. And this is something for us to learn. The angels, such a powerful creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, such a pure creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that are sinless, they would say, we have no knowledge except what you have taught us, O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This way of expression in the Arabic language, when you find the sentence starts with negating something and then it has an exception, it gives the meaning that this is the only what comes after the exception that this is the only thing that is meant in this context. Meaning, لا علم لنا. We have no knowledge except. That means what comes after except, it means this is the only thing that they mean. There's nothing else or no other exceptions that can be part of the exception. Like when we say لا إله إلا الله. لا إله إلا الله means there is no one worthy of worship. It starts with negating everything that is being worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once the sentence starts like this, and then it has the exception, إِلَّا Allah except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means He is the only one, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is worthy of worship, that is not permissible whatsoever to associate partners with Allah. The highest level of uh, sentences of being very stressed and very strong in such a meaning. So the angels, they said, with this humbleness and with this mannerism with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we have no knowledge except what you had, taught us, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ Again, these are ways of stressing the meanings and making it very uh, affirmed and very strong in meanings. Indeed, verily, no doubt, إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ That you are the all-knower, the all-wise. And it's another benefit that we need to, when we're reciting the Qur'an, to learn from what the angels say, from what the messengers of Allah say, and there are many verses in the Qur'an where the messengers of Allah, they say something to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether they would say that in this life or they would say it in the hereafter. We would see in their dua, in their supplication, how much mannerism they had, the perfect mannerism with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what the angels, they said, لا علم لنا. They started by negating everything, denying any form of power or benefit or knowledge, if it's attributed to them. Although they have some knowledge. And the same thing, we might say that we have some knowledge. But where does knowledge come from? If we are nothing but a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember, when we were in the wombs of our mothers, we didn't know anything. When a person was just born, he didn't know anything. And nobody can deny that. And this is the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of how the stages of the creation of the human beings, but most of the human beings, they don't ponder over this. They don't witness the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created things and He's the most high and the most wise subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called us to ponder over these forms of creation and the ways of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَاللَّهُ أَخْرَجَكُمْ مِن بُطُونِ أُمَّهَاتِكُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ شَيْئًا وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَةَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought you out. He subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that brought you out from the wombs of your mothers. لَا تَعْلَمُونَ شَيْئًا لَا Not knowing anything. Shay'an meaning nothing whatsoever that we knew when we were brought out of the wombs of our mothers. Nobody can deny this. وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَةَ It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that gave you the uh, hearing and the sight and the eyes to see. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ For what purpose? For people to enjoy this life and to live a life of forgetfulness, to live a life of being disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to be grateful to Him. This is the injustice of the human beings on the face of earth. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So that you are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that you use the, you use the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you to worship Him alone, to humble yourself to Him. You use your eyes and your ears and your strength and the power that you have so that you would spread goodness, so that you would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to use it according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. So we learn this mannerism, this humbleness from the sayings of the angels, when they said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Subhanak, that you are the one to be glorified, you're the one that is free from all deficiencies, La ilma lana illa ma'allamtana, we have no knowledge, except, except what you have taught us. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ That indeed that you are the, mo- the all-knower, the most wise. Inshallah we continue right after the break. وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا When it comes to you the truth and the attribute of the one who created you, that he's one and alone, running this universe, that he doesn't become born, he doesn't die, he doesn't eat and go to the bathroom. This is not God. The problem here is, yeah. is this, it doesn't make sense. Who was Jesus worshipping? Yeah, because it's recorded in the Gospels. Despite all of the other issues about the Gospels, we put those aside. We just say it's mentioned there that Jesus worshipped God. One who protects us from hunger. trying to get together, but all their efforts were in vain because of ignoring or turning away from this great foundation. We see many people coming to the way of truth, following the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but later on, they get off track. What is the reason behind that? Unity is a result, it's not a cover-up. We have to be united from inside. And Allah made this clear in the Quran when He said, وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُوا الرَّسُولَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulullah. Still in verse number 32, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالُوا سُبْحَانَكَ لَا عِلْمَ لَنَا إِلَّا مَا عَلَّمْتَنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ the angels responding to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordering them to inform Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to, to say, to answer the question about the names of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presented to them, that He taught Adam the names in which the angels, they didn't have the knowledge of such names. And this is a way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showing them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all-knower and He is the most wise subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the angels, they said, Subhanak, glory be to you. No knowledge for us. They did not attribute any knowledge for them, except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught them, 
إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ Indeed, verily, no doubt, that you are the all-knower, the all-wise. Two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that comes with it two of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something that you would see in many verses in the Qur'an, ends with some of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that we only know from the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an, and the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And this is such an important thing for us to learn. And this is one of the parts of the tawheed, the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the oneness of rububiyyah, the oneness of lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His names and attributes. That there is nothing the like of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and He's the all-hearer, the all-seer, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. So we have to believe in the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we believe in them with the principles that nothing is the like of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that it shows the perfection of these names and attributes, and as a result that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most perfect subhanahu wa ta'ala, we do not resemble these attributes to the attributes of the human being, and we do not deny it. Why? Because if someone would say that a human being can be knowledgeable, a human being can be wise, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most high, nothing is the like of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some people might say then, we cannot just say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the same attributes of the human beings. Of course we do not say that. But we should believe in all the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way it is. But we say He is Al-Alim. He is the all-knowledgeable subhanahu wa ta'ala, the all-knower. But nothing the like of the human being. And He is the all-wise subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it's not like the wisdom of the human being. Because nothing is the like of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we affirm it and we confirm it. And we believe in it without distorting the meanings of it. Also we get the benefit of getting to know these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Alim. We have a phone call. Ayman, brother Ayman from Egypt. Go ahead. Uh, wa alaykum as Yes, uh, I just want to tell you, you know, I love you and I love the show. <laughs> uh, yes, I have a question. When so, the uh, angel said that uh, to the Prophet Adam, that, uh, no, no, to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, will you make someone that will shed bloodshed? How did the angels know that humans would shed bloodshed? Sure, inshallah. And right. like, we'll answer that, inshallah, towards the end of the program, inshallah. Jazakumullah khayyam. Barakallahu feek. So, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Alim, he is the all-knower. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does that mean? It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything in the past, knows everything in the future, know the impossible even if it happens, how would it happen? He his knowledge encompasses everything, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything and everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge encompasses it. That means the believers as a result of that, they need to humble themselves to the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they need to see themselves as someone that has no power, has no knowledge whatsoever, unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us the proper knowledge. And also, so that we see that the book of Allah, the Qur'an, has the correct knowledge, because this is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do something, some of the people, which is something that is unfortunate, some people think in a negative way, they have bad expectations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can you imagine? They think that they know better for themselves. They think that, that by disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by committing sins, this will bring some form of goodness in this life or in the hereafter. This is something, people might not say that with their own words, but actions sometimes speak louder than when a person would say something. So it's very important that when we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the all-knower, He knows what's in the past and what's in the future, what's in the present, He knows everything subhanahu wa ta'ala, so we need to humble ourselves to this fact. And as a result of that, the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the religion is for our goodness in this life and in the hereafter. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade us from uh, dealing with usury, then it never ever would bring any goodness to us. Why? Because this is from the all-knower subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the, uh, the women, for example, to observe the hijab, then this is the best way of life. This is the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He's the all-knower. But we need to be patient with the orders of Allah. Sometimes people might think, and this is definitely wrong, that holding fast to the religion is something that is so strict that would make our life miserable. 
It would never make the life of anyone miserable. But the problem is when people make the life of those who are righteous difficult, then people from far away distance, they might think that it's miserable. But the real happiness is when the person is holding fast to the deen of Allah. And this is a point that needs, of course, more explanation to it. We have a phone call. Brother Abdullah from UAE. Go ahead, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, ya Sheikh. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah subhanahu wa increase in Allah, Sheikh. Allah wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair. Sheikh, my question is, when the angel said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Mm-hmm. Are you going to create someone mm-hmm. um, in the art by we by we glorify you? Mm-hmm. Did they say this in a, in, a, in like in a jealousy? Is it what was it a jealousy? How would you do that with classic in Allah? No. Jazakumullah khairan for the question. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. So that's why we need to have the good expectations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that when you see yourself, your life is a bit difficult if you're trying to hold fast to the orders of Allah. It's not because the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are difficult. It's because the people, they made the life of those who are righteous difficult. When people are committing sins and not obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then when this spread out throughout the face of earth, then those who would hold fast to the deen of Allah, they will be like strangers. And in the nature of the human being, no one likes to be a stranger. The human being is such a creation of Allah that try to have some form of communication with others. So it's very important that since our life and our goal is to be nothing but slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it's times of ease, we're still steadfast on the deen of Allah. If it's time of difficulty and people are not according to the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants them to be, we're still nothing but servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have in the messengers of Allah the best examples and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in the authentic hadith, بَدَأَ الْإِسْلَامُ غَرِيبًا وَسَيَعُودُ غَرِيبًا كَمَا بَدَأْ فَطُوبَ الْغُرَبَى That Islam started as a strange thing. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alone, and then Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu with him, and so on. And it will end up to be a strange thing also in the life of the people. But the Prophet sallallahu giving the glad tidings to those who are strangers, those who would hold fast to the way of the Prophet sallallahu even if they would oppose the whole entire world. Why? Because this life is too short. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wise. And we need to understand and witness the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. And there's no way for us to get that unless we recite the book of Allah and ponder over these sunan, these ways of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that gives the Muslim the strength. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the most wise. The most wise, this is the, name, the meaning of Al-Hakim. It has another meaning as the ulama they say, comes from ruling. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that has the power to rule. He subhanahu wa ta'ala, the owner of all things. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that uh, governs the heavens and the earth. We have no say when we breathe the air, when we live, when we are born, when we die. We are nothing but creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The changes of the seasons, the rain, and the different things around us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of all things. And also, when it comes to the part that we have a choice in, the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and whoever obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he is perfecting the way the human being is supposed to be on the face of earth, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَهُ أَسْلَمَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ طَوْعًا وَكَرْهًا وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything submitted itself, aslam, itself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taw'an aw karha. That means whether it's willingly or unwillingly. Many things in our life, we are unwillingly submitting ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unwillingly doesn't mean that we would not like it. It means we have no choice. The way we live our life and breathe the air when we were born, when we were die, and so on and so forth. But then we have revelations from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu that we have orders here from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he is perfectly living one's life according to the orders of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wise. The same thing when it comes to the qadr of Allah. The wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shown in two things. One is in the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the destiny, in the things that happens around us. Everything is by the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The human being might not understand many of the things that happens. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most wise, 
the rise and fall of nations, the truthfulness and falsehood, and the struggle between both. Many people do not understand this. They need to refer back to the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, and they would clearly find the answers to these questions. And with the destiny of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person might lose a loved one, might lose health and things of that nature. We need to witness the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this life is not the life. This is nothing but a, but a passage to the after one, to the hereafter. And we are being tested. And we are being witnessed to see who will be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who's not. The second type of uh, way that we see the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an and in the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And that's why we need to learn the orders of Allah and we need to witness the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we were ordered to worship none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He's the Most High. When we uh, ordered to make the five obligatory prayers on a specific times, not according to our own terms, but according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us in the Qur'an and in the way of the Prophet alayhi then we humble ourselves to the orders of Allah. And we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wise. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to pray dhuhr, four rak'ah, and asr, four rak'ah, and maghrib, three rak'ah, some people would say, why is that? We would say that this is the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as it's mentioned before, if a non-Muslim, for example, asks you, why women wear hijab? Why Muslims do not use or deal with usury? The first words that you need to say is because this is the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the orders of the creator of the heavens and the earth. And we are nothing but slaves and servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we can explain to them the wisdom behind it. But we do not fulfill the orders of Allah because it makes sense to us. Because it would bring some benefit in this world for us. This is not the reason why we do this. The reason why we make the salah, the reason why women wear the hijab, the reason why we do this and halal and haram and so on. Because this is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most wise, the all-knower subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we do nothing but we submit ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why when people ask these types of questions, we need to refer them back to the tawheed. This is what we need to understand the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the oneness of worship, the oneness of creation, that He's the only creator, the only provider and so on. And as a result, He's the only one worthy of worship. And in His names and attributes, if people believe in them, in this, if people believe in the Qur'an, then there is nothing but to submit ourselves. Then what comes secondary to that is to get to know the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why the salah, why the hijab and so on. Not to ask in a way that to know and then a person would change his mind with regarding to the submission. No. Just knowing the, the wisdom behind it, it's definitely a knowledge that is good for a person to know. But it has nothing to do with our submission. That's why we need to have this confidence and this honor and dignity of being Muslims, of being people that submitted themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in which every single human being, they need to submit themselves not to a human being, but to the creator of the heavens and the earth alone, the one that they believe in. They need to submit themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they cannot do that unless they follow the way of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa It is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he did not reveal to every single human being the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, otherwise people would have their own interpretation of things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose messengers for them to be followed. We continue inshallah ta'ala after the break and answering your questions inshallah ta'ala. وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا It comes to you the truth and the attribute of the one who created you, that he's one and alone running this universe, that he doesn't become born, he doesn't die, he doesn't eat and go to the bathroom. This is not God. The problem here is, yeah. is this, it doesn't make sense. Who was Jesus worshipping? Because it's recorded in the Gospels. Despite all of the other issues about the Gospels, we put those aside and just say, it's mentioned there that Jesus worshipped God. One who protects us from hunger. Many people trying to get together, but all their efforts were in vain because of ignoring or turning away from this great foundation. We see many people coming to the way of truth, following the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but later on they get off track. What is the reason behind that? 
Unity is a result. It's not a cover-up. We have to be united from inside. And Allah made this clear in the Quran when He said, وَأَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولَ ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Going through the third verse in this episode before we answer the questions After the angels they said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala سبحانك The glory be to you there is no knowledge that we have except what you had taught us, إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ Indeed, that you are the all-knower, the all-wise. And if we just ponder over these two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the attribute of knowledge and the attribute of wisdom, we can spend so many time explaining and seeing the examples and the effect of that in our life that we need to be nothing but servants, obedient slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قَالَ يَا آدَمُ أَنْبِئْهُمْ بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يَا آدَمْ O Adam, أَنْبِئْهُمْ Inform them. بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ By the names of these things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam. فَلَمَّا أَنْبَأَهُمْ بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed Adam about the names of all things, when Adam informed the angels and said to the angels the names of everything, قَالَ أَلَمْ أَقُلْ لَكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Didn't I say to you that I know the unseen, the ghayb of the heavens and the earth, and I know what you reveal and what you conceal? We have a phone call. Brother Yusuf from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shaykh, good evening. And may Allah's blessing be on you. Barakallahu feek. Zatna khayr. Yeah, I have some three important questions concerning the Surah Baqarah. Sure. Thirty-three to thirty-three. Sure. Uh, my first question is: Does it mean that Allah, in His wisdom, created human beings as the best Khalifa on earth, mm-hmm. and then from all my knowledge has uh, been taught that angels never disobey Allah. But by that question, uh, that they ask Allah, that why should He create those who are coming to commit corruption on earth? Are they not challenging the Almighty Allah? Okay. But by all indication, we have learned that they don't even dare, they don't disobey Allah. Secondly, exactly, uh, are they the angel saying that they are better placed to be the vice parents of Allah on earth? Hmm. Or what kind of explanation can you give to satisfy my mind so that I get the picture? Because any time I read it, I uh, get confused. Hmm. Uh, uh, I'm grateful, thank you. Thank you. Allah is on all the Muslims all over the world. Amen. Thank you very much, Brother Yusuf. Uh, so, uh, the, the verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Adam alayhi salam informed the angels of the different names that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the angels, Didn't I say to you that I am the one that have the knowledge of the unseen of the heavens and the earth? And I know what you reveal and what you conceal. Of course, the angels, they know that. And this is a way in expression to uh, affirm these types of beliefs. And for the human beings also to learn. This is not something that the angels 
were uh, challenging the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is uh, an answer to one of the questions that we heard. It's not challenging the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The angels, as we heard, they were asking, seeking knowledge, wanting to know the wisdom because they, as if, Either they were told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this is what's going to happen by the human beings, that they would shed blood and so on. So they asked, so what's the wisdom behind such a thing? Or they know from before since the jinn were present on the face of earth. So they took this as an evidence that the human beings will follow the same way of the jinn. So they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not challenging the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course not, the angels are in total submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were just asking to get to know the knowledge, to uh, to have the knowledge of why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would create Adam alayhi salam. So uh, in the verse it shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have the knowledge of the unseen that is in the heavens and is in the earth. And the unseen is something that is might be relative when it comes to a human being versus another. Like something that is another country now, it's for me it's unseen. But other human beings they can see it. And there is the absolute unseen where no human being whatsoever would know anything about it. Things that would going to happen in the future, things in the hereafter. The unseen of the heavens, the magnificent creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that no one have knowledge whatsoever of how vast and how powerful is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The things on earth when it comes to the destiny of Allah, the provisions the things that's going to happen in the future, everything, even the ant in the sea or on the on a rock or the fish in the sea, everything is by the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even to the extent of which a leaf would fall from a tree, where would it fall and how it would decay and everything is recorded because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all-knower subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَعْلَمُ مَا تُبُدُونَ وَمَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْتُمُونَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what you reveal and what you conceal. So that means we need to be truthful with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With human beings, we can say things. Human beings, they only see the outside appearance, what they hear from us. But nobody knows what's in the hearts of others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only knows. And that's why in our life, and our acts of worship, in dealing with others, we need to live our life with this fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is witnessing what's in our hearts. يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُونِ وَمَا تُخْفِي الصُّدُورِ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows exactly when a person would steal a look. And he also knows subhanahu wa ta'ala what's in the heart. So many benefits that you would see that it sums, and it's something that is a constant benefit when we recite the Qur'an, that we need to humble ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we need to have this eagerness of wanting to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, so that we are obedient to Him and, to him and we submit ourselves fully to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the question of how Allah subhanahu or how the angels they knew about the nature of the human beings that they would spread corruption on the face of earth and they would shed blood and we talked about that before uh, that this is uh, something as uh, it's mentioned in the verse that the angels said that the ulama they say and again the context of a verse doesn't have to mention all the details Either Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed them when he subhanahu wa ta'ala told them that he would have a human being on the face of earth. So they understood what is the nature of the human being. That is not like the angels. That one of the characteristics of the human beings, they have the choice. That they can spread corruption, they can be righteous, they can shed blood and they can do all kinds of good things. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed them about that. The other meaning that is mentioned is that the jinn they used to be before the human beings on the face of earth. And the jinn, they have that same nature in the, with respect to the amana and the trust and the, the will to obey or disobey. So they took this as an analogy that the human beings will follow the same way. So as a result, they said that. And this is basically to see that there is no contradiction whatsoever in the words of Allah in the Qur'an. And in way of literature in general that you would find sometimes things mentioned in general. And more details that is not needed. And anything that is not mentioned in the Qur'an, we probably... Uh, do not need it unless, of course, it's in the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So this is why, as the ulama, they say, the angels, they said that. The question of, uh, were the angels saying that out of jealousy? Well, of course not. Because these types of ill feelings, uh, like jealousy and, uh, and envy and these types of things, it's within the human beings. But when it comes to the angels, they are free from all forms of sins, and ill feelings and diseases in their hearts and so on and so forth. 
they are pure creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them for a great purpose and they have certain jobs to fulfill and they are in constant worship and praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, as a result of knowing the nature of the angels as it's mentioned in the Quran and in the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, then we deny all forms of uh, negative or deficiencies in them with respect to the diseases that the human beings would have. So they never said that out of jealousy, billah. they said that as a way to get knowledge of the wisdom behind the creation of the human being. And one of these great wisdoms, why the human beings are created, is for the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be shown in practice. That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiver, where is that? When it's only the life of the angels, when there's no sins. So how can this attribute will be in action? Of course, this is a very important point. That we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiver, even if there is no sins are forgiven. This is something that we believe in. But to see the, the practicality of it, is when the human beings are being created. So that they, when they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiver. That for people to see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that is capable of all things. For people to be honored, for people to give for the sake of Allah what they love. For people to sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The angels, they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night, they never tired when it comes to this. But for the human beings, they have certain needs in their life. When the believers would sacrifice the most valuable things in their life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are meanings of ubudiyya, of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that it would only show unless there is someone like the human beings. Some people to sacrifice for the sake of Allah, some people to show the perfect love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their hearts, and for people and the struggle between truthfulness and falsehood, and for these names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be shown in practice to the human beings and to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the most wise subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when it comes to the creation of uh, the human beings and the creation of the angels and the creation of the jinn, or the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to witness the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He is the most high subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, briefly, uh, the, the benefits that we learn, because this is very important that we don't leave you without mentioning the benefits in a precise way, because we need to take that in our daily life, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the knowledge comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And we need to seek that knowledge, but we do not seek it in a one-on-one -on -one relationship, because the shaitan can whisper to the, to the human being, which is an, a very important point. A lot of people on the face of earth, they say that God spoke to me, and he told me to do this and to do that. How would they know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to them? What if it's the shaitan speaking to them? And it's usually when people say that, they're just saying something that fits their own desires. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent messengers of Allah. So we get to know the revelation, the wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the messengers of Allah. Something that never changes from one human being to the other. So that's why all the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa they need to refer back to the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an, and the sunnah of the Prophet wasalam, This is how this ummah will be united. The ummah of the Prophet wasalam, would not be united with loud voices and strong individuals or uh, certain meetings and things of that nature. The only way that would unite us, and there's no difference between a Muslim and a Muslim, whether it's from the north or the south, or white and black and so on and so forth, this is one ummah. The only way that this ummah is to be united is to follow the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So uh, the knowledge is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, witnessing the wisdom and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the all-knower, the all-wise, seeing the mannerism of the angels that we need to learn from, and seeing the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the knowledge of Allah, the unseen of the heavens and the earth, that He knows what's revealed and what's concealed. And this is definitely a benefit that we need to live with to be steadfast on the deen of Islam. Uh, with the questions of uh, Brother Yusuf from Nigeria, inshallah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us life next time, uh, inshallah we'll answer them and uh, forgive us for that. Inshallah next time we'll answer them because of the time. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our deeds and to make us among 
those who are the true followers of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَبِيرًا أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا 